Okay, everyone, uh, welcome back to another one of my series of interviews. Uh, this is Gordon Einstein. I am a crypto and blockchain attorney uh, licensed in the U.S., but residing in Dubai. And just as a reminder, these are a series of short, efficient, hard-hitting interviews that I do with my favorite people, uh, the ones who are involved in the community and contributing and have interesting things to say, whether it's in crypto, economics, policy, or Archaeology, who knows, whatever. Um, so, Dr. Adele Almaseri, am I saying this correctly? I, I, I know yes. you very well, but I, I want to get your last name 100%. Almaseri, but that's good sorry. enough. Perfect. Okay, very good. You know, what can I say? I've known you a long time, but I always go by Dr. Adele because it's, it's charming. Anyways, thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for making the time. I really appreciate it. And, um, you know, you, you've, you've got a lot going on. And I don't, I don't want to cut it short by trying to copy what I think about you. Why don't you introduce yourself and then we'll dive in. Uh, absolutely. My name is Dr. Adil Messiri. I have a PhD in machine learning, artificial intelligence, and trust networks, which is uh, the basis of uh, blockchain. So all of a sudden, uh, blockchain got hold of me and uh, the rest is history. Um, mm -hmm. And I got into speaking conferences, uh, working with different teams, uh, ended up speaking with private banks, uh, prime ministers, and addressed the EU Parliament in um, in Brussels in uh, uh, in person. So that was a wild run. Uh, at the same time, I got into startups early on because they said the magic words: "You can do whatever the fork you want to do, just make it happen." Make it happen. I did. Startup got acquired, and I got hooked up on startup life. So, a dozen startups later, three successful exits. The first one is a unicorn. Um, two flops and uh, about uh, six, seven in, in flight. Mm -hmm. I'm still doing startups, uh, still in the field. Um, I'm also an LP in uh, DGH. DGH is Draper Gorin Hall. I'm an advisor to Draper X. Uh, Draper is uh, Tim Draper, the uh, billionaire in uh, San Francisco, is uh, really, really pushing uh, sure. blockchain. So I enjoy working with him. Um, largely because of his son, Adam Draper. And I... I, I Right. Adam is something else. He's like a ball of energy and he's so futuristic. So yeah. uh, Boost Ventures is like, you know, bring us sci-fi stuff. So it's amazing. It's, it's interesting. You know, I actually knew um, Draper Sr. in Los Angeles 10, 20, no, 10, 12, 13 years ago, uh, back before he got into Bitcoin and crypto and he was just doing regular uh, investments. And I was at a event called the Meat Eaters Ball. And that's where I met his son, Adam, and you know, and then at other events. So I've, I, I've, I've seen him around, and and to see this pivot that he's done into crypto is pretty exciting. And yeah, Adam's like high energy. I, I like what you said. So you, wow, there, there's a lot to unpack there. How did you? You got your PhD in AI, machine learning. Say that again. Correct, uh, AI, machine learning. Um, and when so was this? Uh, this was in the early 2000s, uh, I think I, uh, yeah, around like I, fi I finalized, finalized everything, if I'm not mistaken, 15, 16, something like that. Wow, you were, you were way early. Uh, good man. And then, I mean, I, I got to ask, so much is happening with AI, finally. I mean, I, I know it's been worked on for decades, if not a century, but, you know, it seems like just now the future is finally arriving. And I wonder what you're, you know, but I, I'm, I'm not in depth with it like you are. I wonder what your sensation is like from a more insider perspective on AI. So uh, I am, I'm uh, extremely lucky because I had that happen to me twice, once okay. on blockchain and once on AI. So it's kind of like the same feeling that uh, uh, you would uh, appreciate with kind of like blockchain studying mm -hmm. like the theoretical aspect of it and kind of like working on early. Uh, projects, uh, uh, Ethereum, and 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 a couple of the chains that came out, mm -hmm. and uh, then all of a sudden for it to become a mainstream technology and uh, has the potential to change uh, the world as we know it. Same thing is with AI. Uh, early mm -hmm. on, it was more of like decision making tools, uh, things that can help you analyze documents, uh, but it was still kind of confined to uh, like uh, specific tasks and. Uh, the rest of it is was more material of sci-fi movies. But yeah. now, yeah. all of a sudden, sci-fi is what we live. It's our reality. So we are 
living in a world where you can uh, talk to your phone, the phone will reply to you in, in sound uh, English. Mm -hmm. The potential of elevating human race and um, uh, everyday life is huge. The, uh, a lot of people think about AI as like um, uh, something that will take on everything. I think of AI as a calculator or a car or an airplane. If you told anybody like, you know, just uh, 200 years ago, hey, I'm mm. going to just fly from here to there, they would look at you as crazy and like maybe witchcraft. Mm. But today it's normal and it helps us tremendously as humans to perform better, get things done quicker, live uh, easier life the same thing with ai it will become a tool that helps us remove things that are mundane that we don't need to do focus on the creative part of the uh, human experience so let, let, let me let me tease on that one a little bit I, i'm surprised that what what i ai seems to be replacing people or it's going to be shortly replacing people is in the creative area i thought that was going to be last I, I thought that language writing and art and movies and video and, you know, emotional engagement type stuff would be last. But I'm, I know I'm not the only one. When I talk to Jack, Chat GPT, I'd rather I feel like there's someone there. And when, you know, when I'm seeing the text to video and the and the images that AI, AI produces, Dolly and, and whatnot, or Mid Journey, they're engaging. They're engaging in a way that matches the best human artist who is spending a month on a work and they're doing it in 15 minutes. I mean, is it making our life easier? Is it facilitating creative work or is it re replacing it? Well, that's Soon. a, that's a, it's a really good question. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I want to always bring examples. So okay. uh, examples of uh, things in our life. So uh, we all experience like uh, if you're old enough, booking uh, hotels, booking uh, airplanes, you had to speak to somebody and then they would I, understand. I am old enough. All right. So, uh, and uh, you still look good, man. So, uh, uh, and then. You, you, uh, young, they... young, pretty white. <laughs> but, but thank you. Yeah. Yes. And it's gone. Thank you. Go, go on, please. Yeah. So basically, uh, and the person, the agent on the other side would need to understand you, become creative in picking where you would go, uh, mm -hmm. understand things like your preferences, your uh, food selection activities, all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and then when we say that AI is going to replace that part uh, as uh, uh, somebody that understands you can perform things and give you options, uh, the question that we need to ask is uh, uh, the person doing that job originally, was that the best use of their capabilities and talents or not? So uh, I don't think that there are uh, millions of people today say like, you know, like I, the only thing that I can be creative at is being an, an agent and booking traffic uh, travel all day. So it's the same thing. Uh, 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 okay, I'm sorry, I, I'm going to interrupt. Is it the same thing? Because the, the there's a set of tasks which are known, but not machine performable, but are just sort of ministerial, you know, a bank teller or a airplane booking agent. Then there's creative management, holistic type tasks. And, and I agree, it's kind of drudgery to be a bank teller. Maybe ATMs are a good thing. But I don't know if it's drudgery to be a writer or a painter or a movie director or producer or even a lawyer necessarily, depending on the kind of law you're practicing. And I, 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 to be honest, I, I think the comparison is a little facile, but feel free to disagree. Uh, no, uh, uh, what I was going to go with it is we can elevate that further. Okay. So uh, uh, so it's kind of like, you know, uh, my original example of uh, uh, not being phantom world that you would uh, fly from one content to the other. Mm. But now it is common things. We are building things uh, differently. So at that point in time, you would make kind of like look at it. Uh, nobody will replace the capability for um you know getting on a ship and navigating the water and and getting to the other side and so forth but now it is common thing at that time it was an art and if there wasn't a demand for people to navigate people would not be doing it and hence you would lose the ability to know how you navigate mm -hmm. so it's the same counter argument of saying uh, we are not uh, uh, yet comprehending what we are capable of doing as humans and uh, the mm -hmm. more that we invent new uh, 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 helping aspects, new technologies that we can use, the more that uh, we unlock our own potential. 
So I see that's the, a good argument. I, I haven't heard that one before. Yes. Okay. So is that just the new human activity may start? Hmm. Correct. You know, you know, new... there, there, there's that. There, I think whatever Alpha Mind or Go, whatever it is, you know, they're the ultimate grandmaster of Go lost against the computer, but the right. way that they lost was that the computer made a, a perfectly good but non-human move. It made sort of an alien intelligence move. But the thing is, once the Go master saw it, it opened up a new way of thinking for the Go master, and now this alien weird move, it, was, it wasn't super intelligent, it was just so different that it wouldn't actually hear, occur to a human but the thing is about humans is once we see it, it does occur to us, and then we adopt it. So yes. maybe, maybe we're kind of getting prosthetic AI minds simply by watching it. That's a that's yes. an interesting idea. You are oh, unlocking okay. your, your this capability. You are unlocking your next level. Uh, so far, mm -hmm. like I, I don't want to like super simplify this, but if you are sitting in a, a cave around fire right now doing this interview. Uh, we would not have the slightest idea of what's going to happen over the next, you know, 5,000 years, how we are evolving as a species. And uh, tools uh, are getting better, faster, quicker, which is not a scary thing. Rather, I think it's an exciting thing because we are moving to different paradigm. We just need to understand the tool and figure out ways to use it. Uh, correctly and uh, and not abuse the tool or or kind of like you know just depend on it as a crutch fair enough now we, we could go down this road for an hour but just because of limited time this time of course we're gonna have you back on the show but i, I think when we were doing the pre-interview you mentioned two particular projects you're deeply involved in was was that correct did you want to go yes. into those for a few minutes yeah absolutely uh so uh uh you know my speciality is ai and uh, i have uh been uh, observing how AI is, is, is evolving. I have an AI company. I, de I deliver on uh, LLM models and so forth. But what I have noticed uh, is that we are going through the same hype cycle where uh, if you remember the last one, there was like the uh, blockchain tea company and uh, all different projects. Uh, yeah, the... Kodak.com. <laughs> yes, affect, yeah. affect just the blockchain. Same thing is happening. Yeah. Um, I just came back from uh, giving a presentation in uh, Davos uh, World Economic Forum, uh, and the entire place was 70% uh, talking about AI. So AI hype is, is real, it's coming here. And when you look at um, different uh, aspects of uh, AI, you'll see like Vitalik is, is talking about uh, AI as a player and the role uh, of it as a player on the blockchain. Mm -hmm. uh, IBM and Casper are looking for blockchain to govern AI and provide a way uh, for it as a guardrail of sorts. Yes. Uh, the question that I started posing uh, six months ago was, uh, what about the value? Where is the value? Show me the value, kind of like. Mm -hmm. So, and um, there isn't anybody looking at it. So I started publishing around the same topic. And in my view, what we need to do is create some sort of uh, protocol that allows uh, AI projects to have four things. Those four things are be discovered, be verified, be certified, and then incentivize to work together good. And that's really what blockchain allows us to do. So if you allow mm. me to elaborate, what I'm envisioning is a place that you can come in mm. and you basically say, hey, I need uh, an AI project that does sentiment analysis in this domain. And uh, the, uh, the system will spit out uh, four or five options and you can see if those uh, projects, which one of them is verified by verification, meaning it has been uh, tested through uh, API calls, uh, common way. So you know that there is that what they are saying that they're going to deliver, they ca are capable of delivering. Or you can in in input your own uh, verification set. And then it can be certified, hmm. meaning we get like specialists to look at it, whether they are uh, computer science, uh, you know, professors, or they are, um, you know, accountants or legal point, uh, so that uh, we can give a certification to the AI project saying that they do what they do. Um, and then uh, finally, you can see the track record of each project. So you are a verified project, but you've just started delivering value a month ago versus this one that has been delivering value for uh, a whole year. Mm -hmm. And then how much that they have delivered? So did you deliver, you know, $10,000 worth of value, or you have been doing $10 million, uh, worth of value. All of those allow you to weed 
the uh, the uh, options and figure out which one you want to interact with and then interact with it right there on the platform itself. So it becomes one place that is uh, uh, designed for AI, by AI, uh, to help them to work together. And, and this is a company? Uh, right now it's a protocol, but uh, most likely it will be created in a company. Okay, so that by, this is an interesting project and you've you've done it what you've done a, a couple of times, which is you inverted expectations because you're right, the, the mega trend is people looking as a way to put guardrails on AI and or I'm oh, sorry, not on people are looking at how to put guardrails on AI. Yet they're looking also at using AI to govern blockchains because you know DAOs are you know we know sort of a mixed bag and so are foundations and so are everything else and so are governments. But you you do something really interesting. You, you're going to use blockchain to put the guide guardrails on AI, and AI is going to be putting the guardrails one step away on blockchains. That's right. That's 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 that that's why we have you on the show. That is a very clever inversion that doesn't actually occur to people. So oh, good, perfect. Awesome. And then I think you mentioned a second one, if I remember correctly. Second one is uh, tackling the uh, uh, topic of like, hey, we uh, we have been in blockchain for a, a, a whole uh, long period. You you included so uh, so we know how to use wallet. Keep on going to my age. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go on. Yeah. So, uh, but uh, uh, in order for blockchain to truly uh, achieve its uh, full potential, mm -hmm. it needs to be used by the masses. But how would that happen without kind of like with all the obstacles that we have in the way? Well, you have to ask yourself, what was the killer app of Web2? It's actually email. And okay. what will be uh, the killer app of Web3? In my opinion, it's also going to be email. So um, what I have been putting together is uh, an, a new kind of accessing uh, your account. So it's a mm. social abstraction of your uh, blockchain underneath. Your mm -hmm. entry point is the same that you do today with everything that you uh, interact with on the web. Uh, it's uh, either Gmail, Access, uh, Twitter, uh, you know, Telegram, Facebook, whatever you are used to today to create accounts. It's the same thing. What happens on the back end is you can uh, uh, create either a custodial, semi-custodial, non-custodial uh, wallet mm -hmm. that uh, keeps track of everything that you need from a blockchain. So it abstracts everything blockchain underneath the hood. Kind of like we have this um, a conversation right now over TCP IP, but yes. who really understands what TCP IP is? Beside me. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, I'm, I'm one of 10 lawyers who understands TCP IP. <laughs> and, and, and read the RFPs. Yes. Thank Sweet. you very much. Yes. Yeah. Good. That's why we're having this conversation. Yeah. So, uh, do you know what the first R? Do you know what the first RP was for? RP one. What? Uh, it's the definition of a host. What? What does wow. it mean to be a host on a network? Yes. So there you go. I, I you know, I, I, had to, I had to do a microflex. Okay. So, so go on. So uh, it's the same way. Uh, the by creating a system that allows uh, the normal users to come in, jump in and start using the system, mm -hmm. uh, that will remove a lot of uh, obstacles and then allows us to do new primitives on the system. For example, why have one account? You might have a bunch of different accounts for different uh, purposes, all abstracted under uh, the same identity that you have. Yes. Uh, you might have accounts cross chains. You will be, be able of uh, sending uh, uh, tokens and assets and NFTs just by email so I can Type in your email and say, like, hey, I've sent you those tokens. And it takes care of the rest, where you are, which wallets, all of the stuff will be uh, taken care of. And then why stop there? Uh, let's go and do payroll using the same thing. Because now if you have people working for you, you can just schedule their payments using uh, their emails. And it will automatically send to them when they click on the uh, invitation. Either they have a wallet, so they have the tokens, or they don't have a wallet. Uh, a new wallet is created on the fly and the tokens are in uh, smart contracts holding so that uh, they can claim it. So uh, things like those we have not thought of before. And Sorry, not... is, this, is this email per se or is this like a 
massive extension and upgrade of SMTP so that it integrates with other services. Because that's, that's what I'm that, that's a very interesting idea. Yes, yes, yes. That's what I'm heading uh, next, but baby steps. Okay. So, uh, uh, so the first part, uh, one works on top of uh, SNTP and, and other POP3 and so forth. Mm -hmm. And then next, we'll, we'll delve into the actual uh, infrastructure and do an upgrade to that so that it becomes the norm. But we have to first use it and then uh, go to the next level. And uh, it opens up new ways of thinking about stuff. So, for example... Mm -hmm. uh, we've introduced something called uh, air mail NFTs as uh, opposed to airdrop to where imagine you have a, a collection and you want to airdrop it mm -hmm. instead of getting a bunch of wallets of people that might not want to share their wallets with you. Uh, you just get their email list. It's what we are used to today. If you wanted to reach people, you have their email list and bam, you can send uh, 50,000 emails with 50,000 NFTs. Mm -hmm on whichever change that you like to all those people on the list. It removes obstacles. It, instead of saying, hey, come mm -hmm. here, create a wallet, uh, what's a wallet, and then let's uh, uh, mint a free NFT, it's there so that they can use it. Uh, which you is know, it's little... interesting. People, people are saying that the blockchain will be adopted once it's as easy to use as email. You're actually making it like email. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Okay, and we're gonna we're all gonna, we're obviously gonna have you back on because there's a lot to talk about. But let me shift slightly. You said you were at Davos, and I think you were also at Denver. Are those both correct? Did I hear that? Yes, I was in Davos first, and then uh, Satoshi Roundtable, and then um, uh, to East Denver. Just came right. back. SRT with with our buddy Bruce. So you that that's very engaged of you. That's a lot of travel. Um, yes, I'm. I love conferences, but I also love staying at home and just working comfortably. This on a personal note, how, how do you choose what to attend and then how do you maximize it? So is, I, is there I, any logic to it? Yes, there, there is. Uh, so I, I, I share the same like you. I have um, uh, uh, three kids, uh, two are in college, so they are kind of like totally independent. But uh, Adam, my uh, son, he's uh, 13. And I want to be able of giving him uh, enough attention of my time and enjoy his company as he's growing. Uh, so I, I try to balance between uh, staying with family and, and, and working from here, which I'm very comfortable of doing. But also there are places where there is high impact. Uh, so I look for uh, where I, I'm able of either learning the current state of the art of the uh, industry Mm -hmm. or uh, interacting intellectually with different people that are uh, OJs in the field, uh, or delivering the message to... Uh, OJs or OGs? Hopefully they're OGs. <laughs> uh, I, I, don't, I don't know if we want to be OJ now, even though he was my hero <laughs> growing up. Another age round. Okay, so you're looking for OGs in the field. Yeah, go on. Yes, uh, 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 or uh, delivering mess the message of the, uh, uh, about the domains I, I care about uh, globally. So if you apply those, you'll find that uh, Davos is the uh, highest place where people from all over the world come in to talk about uh, economics and uh, yeah. social changes and, and a whole plethora of things uh, over there, uh, which enables me of getting face to face with people and sitting uh, down and talking with them. Uh, Satoshi has a lot of uh, 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 people that have been in the industry since inception. It's set in a really uh, relaxed environment so that you can exchange ideas. Uh, there is no push uh, one way or the other for what you need to do. Mm -hmm. In East Denver, you see all them budding projects that you can uh, just sit there, uh, grab a coffee or a bottle of water and talk, change. And they are from all over the, uh, the world to so see the, the builders underneath. Um, that's why I, I, I try to choose those and come to them uh, so that uh, I can get interacted. And it's funny because uh, th uh, things happen, like mm -hmm. uh, we still are social creatures. It's uh, hard to create the connection just on Zoom. But when you're sitting with somebody, seeing them in, in 3D um, and uh, grabbing coffee and the, the atmosphere, the, mm -hmm. the experience, the smells, the uh, sound in the back, uh, helps kind of like create this yeah. bonding relationship and understand the person. Lovely. And then you're coming to 2049, token 2049 in Dubai? Uh, th that's the plan right now. 
that's planned right now. So, so I guess I guess you're, it's forming. Um, okay, it, it, it was great. We're, we're we're keeping these kind of short just out of respect for you know the time of people like you. But obviously, we'll have you back, and we appreciate you making yourself available. Um, any any poignant parting thought you want to leave us with? Uh, yes, uh, man is enemy of what it does not understand. So instead of being an enemy, uh, try to understand it. Uh, and, uh, you know, like, it's not too uh, late. I, in every Uber I, I, I rode with, I asked the people, hey, do you know about blockchain? Do you know about mm -hmm. AI? And they've heard about it, but they just don't know about it. They don't understand it. And within, like, the right 10, 15 minutes, uh, we delve into conversations that opens up doors and then end up with a call to action. Don't wait. Just go and start looking at it. Delve in. Uh, uh, go check what all this uh, hoopla about in, in uh, blockchain. There are no barriers. Same thing with uh, AI. To the, the, uh, the tools right now lowered the barriers for you to unlock your inner potential. Do it. Wow. Love it. Okay, on that note, Dr. Dell, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.